All right. So today I am talking about the most common installation error, engine assembly error, let's call it that, um, that I see. And I see this over and over and over and over and over, like hundreds of times I've seen this. Um, this goes against, my fix goes against what the book tells you to do. Um, and this is, I'll share my experience with it. So the most common issue that I see is the flywheel key will shear and the flywheel inside of the flywheel bore will get all chewed up as well as the, the crankshaft will get all chewed up from the flywheel coming loose. Sometimes it's bad enough to the point where you have to replace the crankshaft. Um, and they don't come off from the factory. That's not an issue. But after rebuilds, these flywheel nuts will back off and come loose. So I, I narrowed it down to one particular thing is if you torque this nut to the factory spec, I forget what it is right now. Um, I think it's uh, 85 possibly, 65. You have to look in your book to see. But if you use a torque wrench and you torque that down, it does not seat the flywheel, which is tapered. It does not seat it down properly onto the crankshaft. And when the engine heats up, and the flywheel expands a little bit, it becomes loose and this nut backs off. So why I say that I see this problem so many times is dynoing bikes. So where somebody builds the engine, I'll go to dyno it, and once it's finally up to temperature and it always happens in the same way, I'll do a pull, I'll be coming down deselling, and um, I'm normally pretty low RPM, and it's not anything I'm doing. It's just a matter of uh, engine uh, vibration and temperature, how it happens, is that nut will back off, and that flywheel will come loose and shear. I had one day where I had three bikes do the same exact thing, and um, I always ask the customers, whoever did the work, I said, hey, you know, what did you do? How did you install that flywheel? Uh, and they all say, well, I torqued it to spec. And in that lies lies the issue. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you what I do on them. Um, this one, I have my cam chain on there. I have my uh, thrust washer. I'm going to show you something about that too. That gets oiled on both sides. One-way gear. After inspecting it, cleaning it, going to oil the inside and the outside of the gear as well as this face here because that actually uh, can thrust up against the inside of the uh, flywheel. Give it a spin to verify. We're always putting a new key um, no matter what every single time. Wedge them in there a little bit. Give them a tap to seat them down. All right. So now that that is done, the flywheel goes on. I'll show you kind of my trick of what I do here. You'll line up the key slot, kind of look down the center of it, line it up. And when you get to this point, spin, use your... Hold the flywheel in place, but use your index finger and spin that one-way gear counterclockwise. Or sorry, clock, clockwise. And then that'll help rotate those uh, one-way bearings and the flywheel can drop in place. So at that point, verify that you didn't push the key out. Sometimes that key will push out um, and um, verify that. So next thing we are going to do is 
we are going to clean the threads of the nut as well as the threads on the crankshaft. Get any oil off of them. This nut I'm going to blow some air through. Thrust washer or uh, just the washer goes on there. And red Loctite of your brand choice. So we're going to put a healthy amount of red Loctite on these threads. Let's see if we can see that. Put a pretty good amount of red Loctite on there, all the way around that thread. All right. So you got a um, flywheel nut. You do need to inspect these. Sometimes they wear out. They are uh, 22 millimeter. I always use a 7 8 because that's what's on my socket rack. But anyway, so, all right, here's what differs. I always use and have always used the 18 volt electric impact. Now I do this off of feel you can use an air impact, but um, this has always worked really great for me. Um, and I have the only the only one I've ever had loose is the one that I torqued with the torque wrench instead of using a, a impact of some sort. So what you want to do? Run it down. And then we're just going to watch the socket to stop rotating. I am going to go full throttle on the... Uh... Alright, so from, uh, from the seated position to where it stopped, it only went um, less, less than three quarters of a turn. But you can go too tight. And the issue that you'll see is this one-way gear back here will get tight and it won't spin freely. But you also do need to check. I don't know if you can hear that or see that movement. Yeah, let's zoom in. Maybe you can see. So I'm pulling the gear pushing and pulling the gear. So I check that because the flywheel can go on too deep. And when it goes on too deep, it'll bottom into the one-way gear and then the one-way gear won't free spin. So that's how you verify there's proper clearance. Um, and in doing this, in this fashion, like I say, it's not, not what the book says to do, but, um, this is my uh, experience on it, and I've had great results on it. Like I say I use these 18 volt, you know, DeWalt, Milwaukee, Akita, whatever you got. It seems to be right in the right in the right torque range to uh, properly seat that. So it's not about the rotational torque; it's about having that impact. Um, the impacting action seat this that tapered down further and further and further and and really bottom it out and then of course the red loctite in case there's any expansion that causes that flywheel to loosen up a little bit the red loctite is going to hold the nut so it can't back off and problem solved so save yourself a lot of grief impact red loctite um if you're concerned about the torque value, you can put a, a, a torque wrench back on top of it. But this is the way I've done it for a, a very long time without issue. So that's it for today. And uh, we will talk to you soon.